Original Appearance Manufacturing was founded in Ames, Iowa, and our flagship product is Quick Covers, a brand of slip-on rocker panels that make rusty trucks look as good as the day they drove off the lot. This is the story of how we went from an idea to a prototype to a full-fledged business. We'll give you a peek behind the scenes and share the ups and downs of starting a manufacturing business from scratch right here in the US. We are OAM and you're watching Made in the States. So we're working on this 350 swap in this S10 and we pulled a TBI 350 out of a Chevy van that I had. And uh, I don't know why we're doing it this way, just for fun, just to see if we can, I guess, but we're gonna try and adapt a, we're gonna switch it over to carburation. We're trying to adapt a four barrel carb to the original TBI intake. And as far as I know, no one makes an adapter for that. So typically we'd use our scanner. You wanna pull up the scan file really quick? Yeah but we're having a licensing issue and we're waiting on some edits mm -hmm. from an off-site engineer for some of our toolpath stuff. Thank you. Okay, so that's just a scan of a typical four barrel carb spacer, which we're gonna need to marry that geometry with. You wanna hold up our piece of paper there? We're gonna need to marry that geometry with this geometry and make it all bolt together without any vacuum leaks. So it's gonna be interesting, but since our scanner is completely foobarred. You see, we can pull it into Fusion and reverse engineer it that way. But the only way I can think to scan it is the most ghetto way possible here. So I have like a, a dirty hose from the engine we're gonna use on our transfer paper. And you can just kind of go around with your finger and populate the geometry of whatever's under the paper. And then we'll just put this in the scanner and then convert it and get it in Fusion where we can reverse engineer it. If I move the paper, I'm completely out of luck here. Let's decide, maybe there's a happy tree, evergreen tree, he lives right there. We don't make mistakes, we have happy accidents. And there you go, a geometrically accurate carb spacer thing. All traced out, we're just gonna slap it in the scanner here. Maybe, we can use our brain. There we go. It, did the printer work for you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm convinced that Rage Against the Machine was, they were talking about a printer. This is where you cut to that technical difficulty screen. <laughs> Scan it in, just slide over here. The tape measure must be over here. You got a tape measure on your desk. Skirt. There it is. Looked right at it. So the biggest thing you can see once we pull it in, then we're just tracing it out for a sketch. The the hardest thing about bringing something into Fusion is an image, is that uh, basically you lose the sizing. So that's why we tried to use engineering papers. You can go in and calibrate the scale because these are, these grid lines are exactly 25, what are these, millimeters? I don't know, we're not good with the metric system around here, but it's a, it's an exact measurement, so we can scale based on the paper instead of trying to look at the holes and scale based on something like that, and then our actual thing that we traced out will be the correct geometry and fusion, where then we can get, generate an accurate rendering. All right, so, we got our, you want to show how you did that really quick? Yeah, it's right click, insert in the current design right there. Not too difficult. And so now the hard part of combining these two things, getting them squared up to each other. Um, so it's going to be at least somewhat accurate. There's no way we're going to be perfect. And then creating the narrative where the bolt holes are all going to line up and stuff. So should be fun, but there they are. 
from a piece of paper into CAD. So Alex and I got everything aligned and then filled, so it's essentially one thing. And then we, we, uh, I guess we took the cop out road and handed it over to Jonathan. So he's far superior to us with uh, his CAD work as far as doing lofts and more organic services. So he's just blending it in for flow dynamics and everything, and um, he's finalizing some of our bolt hole stuff. But it's starting to look like a thing. Want to feel it around for the camera really quick? Show all your fine work on that deal. So now the air isn't coming in like here. It'd come in and just hit a wall and just have really bad flow dynamics where here it has enough clearance for the throttle blades, but it has a more directed flow into the two ports of the TBI intake. So we pretty much finished uh, designing this piece so far. So we're going to go ahead and pop it into reality software or Ultimaker Cura. And that, this is where we're going to 3D print it. Let's get this here. Uh, so with this software, we have like full controllability of layer height, how it is on infill. So this is how we preview everything, making sure all the lines are laid perfectly. And that's how it would look on the inside. So we're going to go ahead and pop it over to the actual 3D printer. This is where we have our tiny print farm. So these are CR10 V3s made by Creality. And they're a lot more affordable than your Stratasys machines that are like hundreds of thousands of dollars. So these are for future projects, as you guys will see in the future. This is where I do a lot of the R&Ds. doesn't want to read it. Alright, so we're having some technical difficulties. So we can probably pause that <laughs> and read it. Go back, let's hope this will work. So right now what it's doing is it's taking 81 points of the bed and it's creating a mesh and that mesh tells it the deviation throughout the whole bed. That way if there's a tiny like 0.01 or 0.001 deviation, it'll follow that with a tool head by moving the z-axis up or down. So it creates a even a squish of the line or filling. We always want to make sure our Z offset is optimal and always check just laying the correct line. Because if it's not, you're going to end up with a big, massive mess. You don't want that. And to ensure that everything is laying perfectly, you want almost, whenever it lays the second line down, you want it to be as close, if not squishing, to create an even plane. Because if you start getting valleys within your lines, uh, it'll drag on it and it could lift it when it gets in the later lines. So things like this, not well. It's okay to tear it all apart in the beginning because this is just a brin that we do. To get it all set and done, usually you feed it for a couple of hours, come back to it, see if it's finished, see if it's going well, or see if it failed. <laughs> One of the two.
Do it all apart without breaking it? Yeah, it seems to be all good. I got all the support down, so it looks like a piece. Look at that. Pretty good. I'm afraid to set it on there and see if it's actually accurate. Because we did it with finger paint, basically a dirty finger trace. <laughs> we'll see. Do you want to do the honors? Yeah, let's see if it lines up. The shrinkage and all that. Oh, look at that. It's but the like, holes, the holes line up though. Nice and centered. It's like when we did our fillet though, we lost some of our material in the center, so might do another rendition on that. But yeah. we still got that old car from your Mustang out there before. We do, yeah. Want to go on a field trip out to the the back lot? You got your door trick memorized. I do. I do. Ooh. Oh, busted up your nice interior. I know. <laughs> so what we're going to look at here is when these throttle blades open, they can't hit any part of that space or else you get a nice... Oh no, the throttle's stuck on, it wide open, and now we're going to crash and die. So, be pretty sub-ideal. Looks like we got it pretty good and centered and everything. Looks pretty good. One of you guys got a phone light? Drop it right down the throttle bore. And it clears. It's got full travel on the primaries and secondaries without hitting anything. You did it. That's a thing. <laughs> it works. <laughs> so, we're going to put this engine in an S10, but as you can tell, it came out of my van with 140 or 150,000 miles. And so, putting any extra effort into this thing to convert it to carburation is like kind of a waste of time. And so, originally, it had a TBI fuel injected, um, I guess, piece on top versus a carburetor. And so this intake is specifically designed for that. So in order to run a carb and not have to change the intake, which is what, you know, you probably should do, but we just wanted to see if we could do this. We had to make an adapter to adapt to this intake style to a typical four barrel carburetor. And no one, again, no one makes it because it's complete anarchy and completely backwards to do that. But I don't know, I think it's gonna work out. We're just always trying to do stuff as budget as we can. There's just a little bit more fun to it, I guess. Take a snapshot of it and there. Oh yeah, it clears by a mile. It's not even close. <laughs> That's it, awesome. Yeah, there's plenty of clearance where it gets, it'll start to get good flow down into the center. I mean, as good as you can there. But you can see, I mean, there's a significantly different pattern between the two of these. So that's where we traced out with our finger and everything, traced the essentially this pattern out and we married the two into an adapter. So I don't know if plastic would hold up, but at least we have a good test piece where we want to machine it out of aluminum. We probably have something pretty close to viable at this point. So Jonathan just pulled this off our 3D printer that uh, we ran the part through last night. And so V1 I thought was a little thin and we lost some of the resolution on our holes where they were a little bit larger than the porting that's actually out there on the intake manifold. So he made some modifications there on CAD and this one's looking pretty good. Do you want to do the honors and go check the fitment? Sure can. I gotta remove all the support, but it should line up at least with the holes. Alright, moment of truth here. Show you what it does. There we go. Yeah, and all the, all the mounting holes line up. Now the real question. We can set this on here and the throttle still opens. It looked like it was the same height, you know, like your, your sweeps in there. So it should be the same clearance. Primary throttle shaft opens, no binding. Secondary throttle shaft opens, no binding. So we are in good shape. 
around. We can probably flip it around and still see the blades too. Right here we can up. Skip a turn. Oh yeah. Now we got plenty of clearance still. Yep. Plenty of clearance. It would flow better if the spacer was a little taller, but honestly, you know, you're just getting way too tall at that point. This is a nice one inch thickness. And if anything else, you could always put a the little gasketed spacer in there if we really if it really bothered us. So I think I think that's it, buddy. Hold on. Yeah, we can always make it taller. Awesome. Well, I don't know. Tempted to try and make one out of plastic and run one at some point, <laughs> but uh, in an ideal sense, we'd just machine it out of aluminum, run it through the five axis, and then have a legitimate thing. But as far as a test piece and mock-up goes, it's looking pretty good.